Today I want to walk you through a really common use case. Um, this is something that I ran into very, very often when I was ramping up in Clipfolio and building some of the dashboards that we use internally. And I've uh, controversially called this the most important formula in Clipfolio. It's a really common use case. We're going to have a bar chart with two series uh, and the series are doing slightly different things. So I've called out our requirements here along the top. We want to do two things, and actually we've set it up already. Um, firstly, in our blue series, we want to show um, a numerical metric, and in our case, the number of units sold in each state. In our second series, and that's in green, we want to show the same metric, so the number of units, but this time we're only interested in the states with delayed orders. So, um, let's hop right into it. Two series is here. This is our first series. Well, actually, in a bar chart, what I always do first is build the x-axis. So we'll walk you through what we've done. Pretty simple formula. We started with our data from column B. We, uh, when we evaluated this, and if you don't do this often today, you should definitely make it a best practice. You want to evaluate constantly when you're building a formula, and on the longer ones, it'll really help out. We notice we've got our column header here, so we applied the slice function to resolve that. We then see a few duplicate values in each of these states, which we don't need on our x-axis, so the group function removes those duplicates. And we're left with 20 items, and these are all of the states in our fictional data source. So with the x-axis out of the way, let's move on to our first series. What we wanted to do here is grouping by all of our states, we wanted to show the number of units sold in each of them. So in fact, um, I didn't really need to use the group and group by functions in this case. I could have, up to this point, I could have used our more actions menu to just group this data and have it automatically summarized. I just took this route, sort of you have a few different options to take and if you're comfortable using group and group by, you can certainly still do so. So here we see the data that we're grouping and over here, the data that we are measuring. Um, a common pitfall and one thing to always watch for with group and group by, you always want to ensure you have the same number of items in the first and second parameters. So here we have 125, here also we have 125 and that's exactly what we want. If we saw a difference, we'd immediately know we had a problem. So everything good so far, no issues, not much complexity. Let's move on to our second series though. We tried to take a similar approach and use the group by function. And now that we've got this new type in formula bar, I'm going to make a quick change and just try and make this a little bit more readable. So if I hold shift and press the enter key, I can really um, just format this in a way that's much more readable and help anyone uh, beside myself who, who may have built this hop in and immediately understand what we're doing. So what we're doing here is again we're using the group by function and we're saying the data that we're grouping uh, this time is not all the states, it's just some of the states. We're selecting just the states where our, our last column, column F, equals delayed. And that's only the case on a small number. So most of the points on my x-axis do not have delayed orders. You can see they're all on time. These delayed orders are just a small pocket towards the bottom. So we're saying let's group by just those states with delayed orders. And only for those states, let's show the number of units sold in each of them. So the result of this formula, if I evaluate the group by in general, is that it returns nine items. And that makes sense. As the logistics manager, that's sort of what I expected. I only have nine states with delayed orders. These numbers look accurate too. This is a pretty simple formula and I'm, I'm pretty confident that I haven't done anything wrong. But let's look at what's happening here. So it looks like we've got 804 delayed units in Alabama. That's odd. We usually don't have many delays there. A few in Arizona. Huge number in Florida. Now that's a, that's a red flag. I didn't expect that at all. So let's go take a look at the data source and see what's happening. So if we find Florida here, we see we've got five or six records, but all of these orders are on time. So something is, is quite wrong here. Um, and what's happening is that this formula is working properly. 
It's returning nine items. However, not all of the points on my x-axis meet this condition. Most do not have delayed orders. So what Clipfolio is doing is it's taking these nine items and it's just plotting them against the first nine points on the x-axis. And obviously that's not accurate because Florida has, has zero and we're saying they have over 5,000. So lookup is something, you, you, you'll run into the case where you need to use lookup in a few different situations. And one of them is just this, where you have many points on the x-axis and only some of them are going to have data points. Where that is the case, you need to take special care to explain to Clipfolio where the data in the series should be plotted against the x-axis. So let's go to the start of this formula and let's pop in the lookup function. And from our function help here, I can see that lookup has these three parameters, input, keys, and results. Let's see if we can just fix the formatting here to um, to move our existing formula out of the way, this wasn't um, this was was not a waste. We will still need this. We just also need to do a little work beforehand. So the way lookup works is we look up into the data we know, and I'm going to put in an exclamation point and just look up against the data on our x-axis. So this is all the states in our data source of all of the states. And as you can see, as soon as I type a comma, I can see that I'm now editing the second parameter of the lookup. This is really, really helpful for me. Of all of the states, let's hop on a new line, I want to find a matching value in just the states, and I needed to remove duplicates, that's why I popped in that group function, just the states that meet our condition. So I want to group and select just the states in B where our condition is satisfied. And only where there is a matching value this is where we will need our original formula. Only where there is a matching value oops, we've gone a little bit astray, let's see if we can troubleshoot. What we were hoping to happen would be only where there is a matching value in the states that meet our conditions uh, only then use this group by that we wrote a little bit earlier. So our, our uh, formula bar turned red for a second, so it looks like we had a simple error. It looks like we've got a few extra brackets here. Let's see if that resolves things. It does. So if we evaluate this formula all together, we'll see the same numbers, and there should only be nine numbers just like there were, were before. They will be exactly the same. Except this time, we've taken special care to ensure that these numbers are plotted against the correct points on the x-axis. So Florida rightly shows zero. That large number of delayed orders is actually in New York. And now we're telling a much, much more accurate story. So let's take a look at this formula once more. So lookup, if we pull up our function help, has three parameters. We look up into the data we know. That was simply a reference to the x-axis. We want to find a matching value in just the specific states that satisfy our condition, or just the x-axis points, rather, that satisfy our condition. We need to remove duplicates in this section. That's why I applied the group function. And we can see we're left with nine items. And only where there is a match, only for these nine items, do we want to use this final parameter of the lookup? Only for these nine items, let's show the uh, total number of units sold for each of them. So three parameters in lookup, but when you understand what data each parameter is expecting, you can really break a long formula into manageable chunks like we've done here. This formatting that we've done here I think is really helpful, and also this function help, making sure that this stays up for us. If you happen to lose it, or if you click the X and it goes away, you can always find it again with this little gray button on the left of the formula bar. I hope you found this discussion useful today, and if you run into a situation where you need lookup, you are now officially armed to handle it. Thank you very much, and have a great day.